Okay, so we're catching up with Patrick Sutherland here at, at E3 to find out a little bit more about E3 or, or EA's lineup here at E3. I think what you did at the, the, the your press conference was really catering. You gave people what they wanted. They wanted Star Wars Battlefront. They wanted Mirror's Edge 2, or I don't know if it's called Mirror's Edge 2. Maybe well, you could let Mirror's Edge for now, yes, yes. not 2. Uh, so uh, those two games have been some of the most requested. Is this is that sort of part of why you're bringing bringing them out? Well, there's two things when you when you look at what to build. You got to look at two things. First and foremost, frankly, what does the team want to build? Because you need a passionate team to get a great game out. And obviously, you want to make sure that whatever the team wants to build has a res resonates with consumers or players. And I think in this particular case, we seem to have done both of those. So uh, I, I've heard rumors about Mirror's Edge uh, sequel for, for many years, and perhaps there was some in development, out of development, pre-production, whatever. Uh, wh what has sort of been attacked since the first game launched, and sort of why has it taken this long to get to, to a sequel? Well, I think that we've, um, it's taken this long because we wanted to get to the right concept and the right idea. And Sara Jonsson, who is this producer on it, when she pitched her idea to me and Carl Magnus, the GM for DICE, I was frankly blown away. I'm like, finally, you got it. And, uh, and that's, you know, when you hear something like that, she pitched an idea that frankly can only be built on Gen 4. Um, it's a stunning concept and when she came to us we knew we had it and yes we've been frankly testing ideas and we've been prototyping stuff and I'm glad that we waited to get the right idea. Also seems like a perfect fit in franchise to sort of when you have that next gen because the way it looks and feels sort of fits well to a next gen console as well. Yeah I mean Mirror's Edge will be an action, first person action adventure. It will be a different Mirror's Edge than you have seen before mm. and in a very good way and it will be a very innovative game that people um, I think will be surprised that when we show more from so I, I'm, I'm genuinely excited about it. Is, is it a good thing also for DICE to be working on, on different projects not just Battlefield which has sort of been their, their mainstay franchise for years? I mean DICE has more or less always worked on other things to your point but it's been a lot of Battlefield I can't I can't ignore that. Um, today DICE is a large studio with a lot of people and for DICE to be building Mirror's Edge, Battlefield and Star Wars Battlefront is, is frankly crazy and, and a dream for them. And uh, I can't tell you how many emails and tweets I got from employees at DICE saying after the press conference, you know, oh my god, I work at the best company, you know, in the best studio in the world and, and I can't think of a better place to work. And that's frankly, when I hear that, that makes me happy, you know, because then you know if you have that type of joy and, and, and people are that happy, then you got to get great stuff coming out of there. So we, you did a little bit of a reorganization, setting up an LA office. So how does that fit into sort of the Dice uh, struct uh, or sort of the Dice uh, studio? Yeah. So I think the best way to look at Dice LA is to you know Dice Stockholm has a beautiful office. We have floor eight, floor nine, and now floor ten. Look at Dice LA as floor eleven. You know, they're an extension of the studio. They will help on games. They will work on games. They will work, build expansion packs and help on main games. But it's, it's, it's more of an expen extension to get more talent onto, into the DICE brand. Is it also a thing of where, where you perhaps don't want to grow the Stockholm office to have 400, 500, 600 people? Or is, is, is there sort of a sweet spot of how big you want to have one studio? Yeah, I mean, of course, you, you can argue that the studio is already very big at 350 people or so, but you... For me, it's about where the talent is, and you know, Stockholm is a great gaming city, um, but it just it comes it only has so much talent, and to get a job inside Dice today is very difficult. You will only get hired if you have exactly what it takes to be a part of that team, um, and I think with LA we can extend our reach a little bit and get more talent uh, and a bigger pool of talent uh, that can make the games better. Another new studio is, is working on the game behind us here, Ghost Games, that's set up perhaps for, for a different reason in between DICE and Criterion. Can you talk us through a little bit about what, what your reasons for, for setting that up? Well, the reasons were we had a need for development capacity and we decided that 
there was a lot of talent available in Gothenburg. DICE used to have a studio there many years ago and it, it got moved for other reasons seven, eight years ago. And um, a lot of people were reaching out to us and saying, if you ever do something in Gothenburg again, I'll join. And um, you know the, the right opportunity arised, and we, we started with the right people and the right idea and the right game in place, and we started it. And I have to say, you should go down there, but there's 100 people there today. It's a big studio, and they're making some awesome stuff. It's, it's, it feels so good to be able to build something like that from scratch. Uh, and now we have the right leadership there, we have the right talent in there, and it's, it's just like any of our other good studios. So you, should, you should go visit them. So. One thing that really stood out with the, with the EA press conference yesterday was the fact that you said we're only showing next gen, only PS4, Xbox One. Can you tell us a little bit about the reasoning behind that and sort of, are you, because you're not completely moving on, of course, but, but sort of what the, what the mindset was there? Well, for us, it's uh, obviously Xbox 360 and, the, you know, the call it the Gen 3, still represents a major part of our business and we will support those platforms. We love those platforms. Uh, but for us, it's about a glimpse into the future. That's what gamers will be excited about. And I think the games that we're building um, take so much out of from Gen 4 and what the Gen 4 consoles come with that we just we were eager to show it. And we decided that we're only going to show, show people the future because that's where people want to go. All right. yeah. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Good to see you.